Greetings everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy Thursday. Here's your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. Many of you have been asking in the comment section below, do I qualify to receive the monthly $300 relief payments? In this video everyone, I will be discussing how eligible Americans will be receiving monthly checks from the IRS in just a couple of weeks. I will also go over how you can qualify for this additional money as well. This Friday evening, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and also leave a comment below. Thank you so much everyone. On July 15th, the IRS will start sending monthly child tax credit payments to all eligible American parents. If you qualify, the total amount of monthly payments you could receive from July to December 2021 will equal 50% of the child tax credit you would otherwise get when you file your 2021 tax return next year. Depending on the age of your children, you could receive as much as $300 per kid each month during the second half of this year. But the Internal Revenue Service can only send you monthly payments if it has certain information on hand about you and your children. In most cases, that information will come from your 2019 or 2020 federal income tax return. And unfortunately though, not everyone is required to file a tax return. The great news is that the IRS now has a way for parents who aren't required to file an ordinary tax return to submit the information needed to receive monthly child tax credit payments. Depending on your 2020 adjusted gross income, you can do this by filing either a simplified tax return or a complete return using certain dollar amounts. But whichever method you use, please make sure you follow the instructions very carefully. Otherwise, you might not get the monthly payments you're expecting. Right now, we know there will be two online IRS child tax credit portals to help you make changes. Here's what they're for. The main portal will be used to let families opt out of receiving the monthly child tax credit payments. This is for those who would rather have one large payment next year. The other portal will be for families who don't typically file their tax returns. This will help make sure their information is up to date. Currently, the IRS is urging people to share information about child tax credit to those who don't have permanent addresses. By doing this, you're helping make sure eligible people receive the payments they're eligible for. You can share the information about the portals with them so they know about the programs to help them file a tax return. According to the Internal Revenue Service, roughly 39 million households in the United States will automatically get these payments through direct deposit, paper checks, or debit cards. This tax credit isn't anything new though. It's a tax credit that Americans get as part of their tax refund in the spring. But as part of the American Rescue Plan, instead of getting the credit during your tax refund, parents will see a monthly payment. Parents with children under six years old would see a monthly payment of up to $300. If the child is over the age of six, the payments are up to $250. To qualify, individual taxpayers will need to make $75,000 or less. For a married couple filing jointly, that adjusted gross income is $150,000 or less. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows a majority of stimulus money is still being spent on basic necessities, including food, rent, mortgage payments, and utilities. When asked whether the Biden administration would back a fourth stimulus check, to keep providing Americans with support while this crisis lingers, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, we will see what members of Congress propose. A large number of lawmakers in Congress want to pass more stimulus relief for the American people. House Representatives Pramilia Jayapal and Rashida Tlaib have reintroduced the Automatic Boost Communities Act legislation. The bill would immediately provide a $2,000 payment to every person in America as critical relief during the crisis, followed by $1,000 recurring monthly payments throughout the ongoing crisis and that will continue for one year after the end of the crisis. And this is to help our country and families recover. The ABC Act would be funded directly from the Treasury with no additional debt issued by minting two $1 trillion coins and additional coins as necessary. The ABC Act would also uplift unbanked and underbanked communities by creating a buffer for people who have seen their cost of living rise for decades as their wages have stagnated. Congresswoman Jayapal said, one in seven families don't have enough to eat. 
more than 8 million people have been pushed into poverty. Nearly 1 million new people are filing for unemployment every single week. I myself definitely support the ABC Act. There are millions of Americans that could really use monthly $1,000 payments until the end of this crisis. I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, Senator Blunt, Senator Barrasso, uh, Senator uh, Toomey, and uh, they're here with us today. Senator Crapo and uh, Senator Wicker were unable to join, but they're here in spirit. So I, uh, I, I'm sorry they're not here, but we, they have em emboldened us to speak in their stead. So where are we? Senate Republicans continue to negotiate in good faith. We've had a lot of good dialogue with the White House. We're trying to get to that common goal of reaching a bipartisan infrastructure agreement that we talked about in the Oval Office with the President several weeks ago, and I talked with him even previous to that. We believe that this counteroffer delivers on what President Biden told us in the Oval Office that day, and that is uh, to try to reach somewhere near a trillion dollars over an eight-year period of time that would include our baseline spending. Uh, we have achieved that goal with this counteroffer. But we've also, I think, done something that um, has stayed true to what our beliefs are when we very first started this, um, this endeavor, and that is sticking to the core physical infrastructure. What is the definition of infrastructure? And uh, we have stayed within the boundaries of our original um, plan. Uh, I think that's what the American people think of when they think of, in, uh, of infrastructure, and that's certainly what we do, too. But there's a couple bits of good news, I think, that have happened since we had that meeting with the president. Number one, we passed a bipartisan water infrastructure package of $35 billion out of my EPW committee center with uh, Chairman Carper, bipartisan. Uh, we got an 89 to 2 or 88 to 2 uh, vote on the Senate floor on that piece of legislation. That's one of the pieces that the president had and we have a, a like agreement on in terms of physical infrastructure. The other thing is yesterday, we passed a $316 trillion five-year surface transportation bill. It has a lot of things that the president wants in there, resiliency, roads and bridges. Um, we have connecting communities in there. And uh, we also have uh, uh, EV charging infrastructure piece in there. So that passed out of our committee 20 to nothing. We are now working on the floor right now, as you all know, on Endless Frontier. Endless Frontier is a bipartisan, came out of Commerce Committee, I'm on Commerce, bipartisan. That was part of what the President initially asked us to look at as infrastructure. We don't consider that physical infrastructure, but we do think it's part of the package that the President should, should be able to, to um, distinguish as part of his infrastructure. So, so everyone, that is the end of the video for this morning. I hope you found this video helpful today. This Friday evening, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and also leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a very, very blessed Thursday.